Hey brother, what's up? JK with Porn Reboot here, and today we're going to be talking about how to identify the trigger stage of your porn addiction cycle. Earlier on in the week, we talked about the dormant stage of your porn addiction cycle. And I spoke about why this is the most dangerous stage. And there were two main reasons. And the first is because it can last anywhere from weeks to years, where there's no serious acting out behavior, no binging on pornography, no binging on masturbation. And you can feel that everything is all right. And the second reason is that you're quite functional during this time. So during the dormant stage, you're able to advance in your career, you're able to grow a business, you're able to get into a relationship, you're able to start a family, many things that a man would be able to do normally if he wasn't struggling with an out of control behavior. And this can give you the false belief that your behavior is under control only to throw you off later when you end up relapsing. And then you find that, wow, nothing has actually changed. I'm still watching the same type of pornography. So that's the first stage. And of course, when you slip, you don't slip randomly, you slip because of a trigger. Now you may be familiar with the term trigger. A lot of men, when I ask them, particularly my clients for the first time, well, what caused you to experience that trigger? The answer is often, well, I don't know. I just, I just experienced an urge. It's very important for you to pay close attention to your triggers and become quite aware of them because that's one of the things that you have to do. It's a requirement to be able to identify your trigger before you're able to reboot and fully rewire your brain. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit today. Now when you're triggered, it's often because of something that happened. It is rarely random. There's only one situation where your trigger might be random, and that's if you have a history of some sort of trauma, some sort of sexual, physical, or mental abuse that happened in your life. And in those cases, you could enter into a state of hyperarousal quite randomly but it's just due to your psychological state, due to your trauma. That's not really something we cover in Porn Reboots. There are a lot of therapists that can help you if you are struggling with some sort of serious past trauma. And of course, if you get on a call with one of our Reboot strategists or with me, we're happy to refer you to the appropriate professional for that. But in the vast majority of cases, men whose addiction comes from their addiction to high-speed internet pornography you're usually triggered because you are stressed, because of a strong emotion, because of some unresolved issue, or because you are lonely and you feel the need for intimacy. And when men are triggered, I found professionally that men fall into one of three categories. And the first category is what I call opportunity-based, or rather opportunity-induced triggers. And an opportunity-induced trigger would be a situation where you haven't been able to view pornography or to masturbate for a while, perhaps due to the fact that you are around other people, you're with your family or you're at work all the time. You're always in an environment where there are people. And for the first time in a long time, you have the opportunity to be alone. Maybe a road trip, maybe your wife goes out to run an errand. Maybe she goes to bed, your wife or your partner goes to bed early and you find yourself alone. Maybe you come across an unsecured device owned by somebody else or you travel with a partner somewhere and you find out that the cable TV has some sort of pornographic content on it. That's an opportunity. But typically, you wouldn't be triggered. But it doesn't matter because either way, you end up relapsing and often binging. The second category is what I would call attachment-induced triggers. And this usually occurs in men who tend to get into relationships. And when they're in a relationship, they never view pornography. So you might be able to relate to this if you're the guy who, anytime you're in a relationship, there's no porn, there's no masturbation, or it might be there, but it's just, you're not engaging in it to a compulsive extent. But once the relationship ends, or once there's a lot of drama in the relationship, a lot of arguments in the relationship, you quickly fall back on your behavior. Now, this can be also a very dangerous category because some relationships last years, some of these relationships last months. And during these periods of time, a lot of men who were rebooting and they were learning the process of rebooting and they were making progress, they stop all the things they were doing because they feel that they're okay but their trigger comes immediately there's an issue in the relationship. Sometimes it doesn't even have to be an argument. Sometimes you're riding 
your initial honeymoon period, that biochemical high early in the relationship. And once it wears out and it's no longer as exciting as it was in the beginning, then your head's on a swivel and you start looking for something else, some other form of novelty. Where's the easiest place to find that sort of novelty? In pornography and masturbation, of course. So that's the second category, that's attachments induced. And the final one is trauma, which I already spoke about earlier, where you've experienced some sort of physical, mental, verbal, or sexual abuse, usually growing up, or you've experienced some form of abandonment or neglect at some point in your life. In these cases, the trigger is unpredictable, unless you have already identified your trigger and you have developed coping strategies to deal with this. So brothers, it is important to identify the different situations that trigger you. For me, it was being alone, it was anxiety, it was stress. And in fact, we can even get a little bit more specific when it comes to triggers. I found that men who fall into the category of attachments induced triggers are men who, whose trigger is usually a lack of intimacy, will usually experience isolation, they'll experience loneliness, they'll experience boredom, and in some cases they'll experience this suffocating feeling when they're in a relationship. And this suffocating feeling in particular comes about when you're in a relationship but the intimacy is no longer there. Like I said earlier, if you've gone through that honeymoon period and all the sexual tension and other things that was keeping it going are gone, now you actually have to work on the relationship sometimes the intimacy drops down a level or it completely disappears. And so when someone is close to you but there's no intimacy, you don't feel like you're getting anything back from that person. You don't feel like you're getting your needs met. So that person instead starts becoming a burden. If you've ever been in a relationship where the intimacy is gone and you often find yourself being irritated at your partner for no good reason or irritated by little things they do, you may want to watch out for that because that might be a trigger for you. In some cases, you might feel isolated because you don't feel that your partner is fulfilling your needs. For men who have unresolved issues from the past, or men who struggle with trauma as well, sometimes you'll feel inexplicable anxiety over a period of time. That's the sign that you're triggered. Also, you might experience numbness, so you just don't feel anything. You might wake up in the morning and there's no emotion, or you might go through a certain number of days where you just don't feel anything. It is so important to be able to develop enough self-awareness to identify all these little emotions that you experience that are caused by your trigger. So brothers, you can do that on your own, of course. There are a lot of resources that you can use. I found that it's quite helpful to have physical tools and strategies which you can use to identify your triggers. Or once you've identified the trigger, you have different tools at hand which you can use to handle them and prevent them from becoming a slip or eventually escalating into a relapse. We provide some of these for free in our Porn Reboot group. So if you're not a part of the group, check it out. There's a link to it in the description of the video below. So that's it brothers, how to identify your triggers during the trigger stage of the porn addiction cycle. I hope you found that helpful. If you found this video helpful and would like to get more tips on ending your out of control behavior with porn, sex, or masturbation, make sure you subscribe by clicking on the subscribe icon on the bottom right corner of this video. And if you like the video, go ahead and leave us a like below and comment and let me know what other sort of videos you'd like me to put together for you. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I'll speak to you later in the week.